Good morning. It's awesome to be with you here on the startup stage, and, and uh, everyone looks a little bit slower than yesterday morning, so it looks like a good night out at the bars. And I'm ecstatic to spend some time with you on the startup stage because it's really the beginning of a journey. And every single time you see an entrepreneur IPO their company, or I spend a lot of time with, with professional sports teams, you see them win the Super Bowl or a championship, or for me in combat operations, you get to seal the SEAL movie at the end, and everyone assumes that, well, all those people's lives must have been good, and then it was great, and then it was awesome, right? We assume that there's this linear trajectory and everybody else has no problems. Well, the goal this morning is to really lay out the truth, which is the truth is, you know, the, every time you evolve, you're going to have a new level of challenges, but you're also going to then get another exciting challenge beyond that. And so the goal is if you can get a label to where you are in the process, it sets the conditions where you can understand it, and then you can drive through it. So the goal is to, to set the conditions where now you can see, okay, I understand what's happening, so now you can move through it, right? Because in the end, there's a journey that we're all continuously on, right? And for me, it starts with an encounter. Something happens in the physical world outside of you, which then gives you, you know, an, an awakening, right? So an encounter can be a couple things. I love the Chinese symbol for crisis, danger and opportunity, right? So you can, you can have an encounter that's a crisis, like a stock market crash or something goes horribly wrong with one of your concepts, or you can have an opportunity. You can see something new. You see the world differently than you've ever seen before. Right, then internally you have a response to that. You have an internal awakening. You say, oh wow, this is something I can drive different. You go from the little bull that you used to live in, and now you say, I'm gonna be in a completely different space. I'm gonna jump into an entirely new world. Right, and this first process happens continually to all of us hundreds of times a day. External stimulus, internal shift. External stimulus, internal shift. The interesting point is when we start to drive the phase three, right? What's the purpose? We start to get into the why. So we're gonna do some, some seal math here. Right, so in leadership for me is a couple of different things. So at first you have an encounter, you see the world as it is, and then you have an awakening, you see the world as it could be, which really sets the condition for possibility. You know, when you sit in the seats right now, you're in a place of possibility, right? And possibility plus any action that you take to make it as you see it is what it takes to manifest anything to reality. So using our substitution, if you encounter something, see it as it is, take action, you can drive it into reality. So then next, let's play with, okay, so then any time to manifest something into reality, you have to take more action to overcome the resistance. So what's the, that's obvious and intuitive, right? But what's the trick is you never know how much resistance you're going to encounter. So therefore, the amount of action you take is only going to equal the strength of your purpose. And therefore, the strength of your purpose has to be greater than the resistance to manifestation. So the bottom line is anything you want to bring into reality you've got to have a greater strength of purpose than any resistance that you encounter, right? Which sounds easy in a mathematical sense, but every single day when you encounter those new challenges, it changes the game. So then you have to have the will to change, right? Now you've established your purpose. How do you drive the will to change? What's the difference between the person that drives their company for three, five, 10 years and makes it a reality and someone that, that stops? Well, for us, the difference is humans are very easy. We do things for two reasons, to avoid pain and gain pleasure. So on the avoiding pain component, you have to stack up. What does it cost you? you know, what will it cost you if you don't drive this new concept that you want to bring to reality? What's it cost you? Right? What's it cost you in the past? What's it going to cost you currently? And what's it going to cost you in the future? You know, in the SEALs, if you have any given day, you think, maybe I don't want to train hard today. Right? If you think about it in the terms of the present, then it's very easy to say, well, I'm not going to do it. Or in, or in the business world, what if I just take today off? What if I just don't go to the conference today, right? So it's very easy if you use one component, but if you stack the three and say, what's the pain that I'm trying to avoid? And then you can also stack, what's the pleasure? What will you gain from the change? See, pain tends to be a great motivator, right? Pain, if you might have imbibed too much alcohol last night, you may think, I'll never drink again, <laughs> right? But pleasure is what sustains it, because by tonight, the pain's gone, you'll drink again, right? So, Pain and pleasure really sets the conditions where now, this is the strength of your purpose, right? And that strength of purpose is so crucial. I studied chemistry at the Naval Academy, never used it for anything but explosives, but that strength of purpose is the thing that carries you throughout any obstacle you encounter. And then finally, the belief, right? You cannot be prepared for something while secretly believing it doesn't happen. If you don't believe you can make it happen, then it never will. People say, well, it would be great. I wish I had, if I had a SEAL team, I could do anything. But it really comes down to, we've never been a part of teams of perfect people, but it takes that belief that you can make it, make it happen. And that gives you the apprenticeship, right? Now that you know, hey, here's the reason I'm gonna go do this, and here's my purpose, 
I drive my apprenticeship, right? What's it take to go from a t tiny tot to somebody that can drive a car at 200 miles an hour? And whatever it is in your expertise, whatever your business is, whatever it takes for you to drive that, that sets the conditions where you have to go through your training, and we use Yoda here, where you let your, to let yourself go of everything you fear to lose, right? Anytime you hesitate, anytime you don't let yourself go fully into it, you can't manifest it, right? Which finally gets you to the crucible. Now, the good news is in startup world, you get to encounter crucible about 10 times a day, right? Every time you go through the training and then you go through the crucible, which is now I have to find out what am I going to do, right? What am I going to do is I take my concept as I encounter all of my personal fears, all the frustrations, all the pitches, all the different rejection, right? And then how does it, where in the three phases of life, my individual life, we call it the crazy roommate, my internal conversations of doubt, you know, next in my relationships with my team, and then the third in the profession, how does the company come together? Every single day you have to go through that crucible, which then gets you to the breakthrough, right? When you get the breakthrough, now you get to see the world in an entirely new way. So I like to picture this just like from, a, uh, from my free fall days. If you're talking to someone who's looking at things right from the ground, if you ask them, what's a tree look like? They're going to tell you, hey, it's three times taller than I am. But if you someone at 15,000 feet, the world looks completely different. Someone's at 20,000 feet, again, and now you get here to start looking at the curvature of the earth. So as you start to have conversations with different people on your team, you have to figure out where are they? Because if I'm talking about to somebody from here, the world looks very different from here. So what level of conversation are you in? And how do you want to drive that? And then so he, how does that work for me? How does this spiral up so you continue? For, for me, I started out as a Navy SEAL. So I had the encounter, we had 9-11. Right, and those attacks changed my perspective and I had an awakening, hey, it's not safe anymore. So my purpose, these are my three little kids, of course, thank God they look like their mother, not me, right, which set the conditions where my will to change was driven by a drive to not have any more terrorist attacks. It set the conditions where my kids could be raised in a safe environment. So I went through the apprenticeship, I went through SEAL training, I went through all the trials and tribulations that you do every single day, and then I went through Crucible. I had multiple combat tours in Iraq where every single day you had to evolve and learn because if you didn't, it was evolve or die. Which then led me to a breakthrough, of course, these are back in the days and I still had hair, right? Where you, could, you realize you could shape world leaders and you could now engage in a way that you could drive change. And so, but the breakthrough was, hey, the individual can make a difference. So then I said, well, let's see if I can stop war in the first place. And I went to Yemen, right? And I went to Yemen and said, we can't kill our way out of the problem. We have to be getting better at, at the political and economic solutions. Right? Again, my kids, my constant driver, some of your purpose will continue to drive through, right? trying to avoid all the loss from, from reactive change. So I went through an apprenticeship, I went through an MBA, I went to London, went to Paris, went to New York, went to India, went to China, and trying to learn the language of business and had to go through that crucible, which then I shifted from a military career into private sector, right? So I had to go through a completely different crucible, completely different language, and as many of you have experienced, completely new set of challenges. And the breakthrough is, wow, now I can change in a very different way. So then I said, okay, I went into management. And I realized in management consulting, you know, there's a little bit of value added, but the awakening is the people that truly change the world are those that inspire others. People like Churchill, people like Martin Luther King Jr., right? Which set the conditions where, hey, if I want to continue to evolve so I can actually do better, the pain for me was in management, most of the potential is left behind, right? Very little of it's manifested into reality, but in leadership, you can realize true potential. And so by changing into that, that model of the world, I went through another apprenticeship. I went with Tony Robbins, I went to McChrystal Group, I went to HeartMath, I went through all these different training programs to then realize, wow, now over time, you have an exponential impact. You can get on a stage like this where with a room full of entrepreneurs like yourselves, if you hear one thing that changes your perspective, I can go home and go to sleep and you guys can drive impact for the rest of your lives and the whole world changes and it's no longer about me. Right, which sets the conditions where now I get to work with all these fantastic organizations and do very different things because now it's not about me, it's about driving that process, it's about teaching those principles that change the game. Right? So this process as it starts here vertically, then it transitions to the horizontal, right? So now you're gonna spiral up through that as, as you change along the way. And so there'll be a couple of breakdowns. Where do the things break down? So I thought I'd give you a couple examples of between awakening and purpose, right? I encounter the world differently, I think that there's possibility, and then did I drive a strong enough purpose to then manifest into reality? Iridium's a great example, right? It was a huge opportunity. They saw an opportunity in the marketplace is extraordinary, but instead of driving that purpose, they instead went bankrupt. 
because they didn't find the niche that allowed them to truly transform it for the consumer. They did it for themselves, not the consumer. You know, the will to change. Did you find that pain and pleasure? Kodak stuck with film as the digital evolution happened and didn't allow themselves to evolve. And because they didn't evolve, they didn't change, they said, well, we don't want to destroy our film market. It ended up, they lost everything. Same as Blockbuster. Netflix tried multiple times to get acquired by Blockbuster, but at the time they said, this isn't a model we want to drive, right? So instead of that creative destruction, they didn't move in. In the apprenticeship, obviously everybody knows Steve Jobs multiple times has said, I never could have built what he built at Apple later had he not first gone through that apprenticeship of getting fired and coming back through. And then finally, the crucible. We talked about the crucible, but there's really three things you can do in any given situation. Right? When you come up to a challenge, you can either one, self-sabotage, which guarantees failure. Two, you can maintain status quo, which in a changing world sets the conditions where <clears throat> it's also failure. <clears throat> and then third, you can take a leap of faith. And as many of you encountered in this room to be here today, if you take that leap of faith, do you ever get to see what it looks like before you, before you take the leap of faith? Right? You never get to see what's gonna turn out on the other side. But every single time, it ends up in a place that's better than you could have imagined. And then you get the breakthrough, right? You get that, that breakthrough that everyone sees at the end where you, you've got Google or Waze or any of these companies that continue to evolve beyond it and set the conditions where they did the things that everyone thought was impossible. So the, my goal this morning is to first walk you through this entrepreneurial journey from my perspective and now I want to make it real and talk through it with you. So what questions or comments do you have? And I think we have the... Uh, the uh, question box. If you can toss that out to the audience and we'll, we'll take some Q&A. Anyone? Any questions on your entrepreneurial journey, ma'am? not about the entrepreneurial journey, it's about one of the pictures that you had. Was somebody jumping out of a plane with a dog? Yes. Yeah? Oh, okay. That's it? Anybody? Yes, we, we jump out of the planes with the dogs. They go with us. <laughs> it's much like when they stick their head out the car window, they're ecstatic. Yeah. We have a minute left. Anybody else? Any other questions? Sir. Hi, so um, I mean, absolutely brilliant and totally feel the kind of roller coaster ride. Yes. But what I'm really interested in is so uh, my background is kind of heavily tech, and now I'm kind of having to go out there. And I did pitch yesterday and was kind of shaking like a leaf. And how you kind of turn from being a Navy SEAL to kind of standing up and doing that, and how do you deal with the nerves, because you seem very confident chatting there, but there must have been a kind of evolution from that perspective of being able to stand up on stage and, and do what you do. Absolutely, it was a huge transformation. Then what I found was, I was basically speaking a different language. I would go into rooms and I knew I had lessons that, were I, that I thought were valuable to people, but every single time I spoke about it, it didn't resonate. People would say, that's interesting, and that's why I did the MBA. I didn't really gain new financial skills, but what I learned was the language of business. Because before I'd walk in and I'd speak Spanish and they'd speak French, and we never connected. And so I took the time to learn the language of the people I wanted to serve. And in doing so, was able to adapt my message so that it was resonant. Because at first I told the story from my perspective and it had no relevance. And so the whole goal is find out what's the audience and how do you speak into the listening? How do you communicate in a way that's powerful to them? Yes, sir. I think one more. Um, we, in, in relation to working with companies, which is, your, which is the one that you're most proud of? In, in the companies I work yeah. with? Uh, well, I'd say each one's different. Like, so it's because they're very different phases. For Miami Dolphins, you know, seeing the players go out and be passionate and, and win a football game is exhilarating, right? Because the fun thing about sports is you get a very binary response, like you either win or you lose. So, you know, that's really exciting. When you're working with a startup, when you see a founder or a CEO go from hiring everyone that's just like them and then a, having massive blind spots in the company, instead, you know, for, for me and the SEALs, you know, if you ever want to ask a Navy SEAL how important they are, just ask them, we'll tell you, right? So 
we started with all one type of people, but we didn't, we didn't have the helicopters to transport, we didn't have the relationships with the State Department and the CIA, so we diversified, and that set the conditions where we could answer any questions. So working with a startup and helping them to diversify their talent in the company to the point where they can be unstoppable is a blast. You know, working with academic institutions where they had teach intellectual knowledge, but they often miss the other two components of emotional knowing and applied experience. And so, to me, when you bring in all three components and help whatever organization become holistic, then you move those flat spots on the tire and you allow them to run. That's the most exciting part for me. Best. Oh, my best failure? There are many and in, in, uh, in varied. <laughs> But, 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 but that is when, if you said one of my superpowers is I fail faster than anybody I know. You know, and failure, when it becomes an end state, it's only failure is an end state. You know, that the, all the things that I've learned and all the mistakes that I've made, the job I love now is fun because it's now perfect for the environment. Because if I told you, hey, my life was easy, you don't walk out of here, right? But if I told you I've screwed everything up, you can sit there and go, hey, I have screwed up way less than him and, and I'm still here. So then it sets the conditions where people can learn from it. So the... We can talk off stage, that's an hour long discussion. <laughs> awesome, and then one final one. Or do we need to go? Hi, hello, hi. So this entrepreneurial journey is one that I'm making the assumption you shouldn't have to go through alone. So you shouldn't? Shouldn't have to go through alone. So my yes. question is, what kinds of people do you need to take with you on this journey and where do you find them? For, for me, the answer is as many as you can take, right? And, and it, it comes down to every time I find a block that I can't get through, my fundamental assumption is there's someone that has the answer. So I continue searching until I find someone that has that answer and then you get to the next challenge and then I find the person with the next answer. And for me, there's three types of people. They'll come into your life for a reason, for a specific moment, for a season, for a period of time, or for life. And so being very free that people are gonna have all three of those components, then that sets the conditions where I, I don't get stuck on if someone evolves out of my life, then they were there for that reason or that season. But you know, the goal is as inclusive as possible because I fundamentally believe we don't have all the answers ourselves. So thank you very much.